Konnichiwa, it's Anne from Photography Mom. Today I thought I would spend some time giving my re review of the new book, Abroad in Japan by Chris Broad. When my family and I heard his new book was being released, we ordered a copy straight away from my local Demix bookshop in Toowoomba. We received this hardcover book about two weeks ago. If you are a fan of the Abroad in Japan channel, this book is an easy read from start to finish. My family and I are very lucky to have visited Japan twice. We love Japanese cuisine and culture. This last few years, we really enjoy watching Chris Brooks' YouTube channel, especially since 2020 when the COVID lockdown started. It was our way of visiting Japan when travel was impossible. In the last three years, we watch every video on his channel. We have really had a great time getting to know Japan and watching Chris get up to all sorts of hijinks. Of course, we grew to love his circle of friends, including Ryotaro, Natsuki, Shala, Joey, Kono, and Nick, to name a few. Most of the book is about Chris' first few years in Japan including how he got into the JET program, his first days and weeks in Sakata and the senior high school. It was great that he was able to provide a clear picture of the initial struggle he had with culture shock related to pretty much everything that he experienced in those early days. From his first day in Japan, to his first day in a new apartment, to his first day at a new school, to his first time teaching a classroom full of teenagers. If you have watched both or all of his early videos, you should be able to stitch together what happened in those first three years or so. However, it was great to read his first-hand account of this amazing time in his life. Highlights include his first winter and the shock of realizing how much snow actually falls in northern Japan. His first encounter with Japanese work culture and hierarchy. His quirky colleagues, all of whom have personalities traits I can identify with based on my work ex workplace experience. Chris's decisions and determination to learn the Japanese language and be fluent speaks volume about his willpower and his personality. Think about trying to learn a language that has nothing in common with your own mother tongue. When we try to read European languages, at least we can try to pronounce the words. Looking at Japanese text, our brains won't even get to the point of making any sounds in our heads. Furthermore, his willingness to freely immerse himself in a completely new culture and to absorb it paints the picture of a man with an open mind. Of great personal delight was Chris's retelling of how he first met Natsuki. Real friends are rare and I reflect on the fact that it was from a random encounter in the streets of Sakata at night that they first met. In fact, you can see this encounter in Chris's video called Is it difficult to make friends in Japan? We really enjoy watching this part of that video as it allows the viewer to be there when this historical moment occurred. Chris also spent time discussing the speech competition he took part in during his first year in Sakata. From his failure to complete the Japanese language speech in his first attempt, to actually winning the competition the next year, it once again highlights someone with strong determination to succeed in my opinion. He covers some of this in his video titled Speaking Japanese Fluently in Six Months Six Steps to Success. Chris also spent time writing about how he met and ended up dating Aika, a Japanese woman. You can see her in several of his early videos. 
I really admire the fact that Chris also discussed school bullying. It's a topic that is seldom mentioned and I personally believe raising it was very important. Chris's sadness when he left Sakata to move to Sentai was very palpable. In the book, he basically had to start again with nothing when he moved to Sendai. However, he did have the advantage of having Ryotaro on his side. From their initial meeting, Ryotaro already saw the potential that Chris could bring. In terms of what they could do together to promote the Tohoku region, especially after the events of 2011. The later part of the book covers Chris's difficulties with getting an apartment as a foreigner in Japan, his discovery of Gyutan, Kaustan, and as well as one of his biggest viral hits, McDonald's fries with chocolate sauce. Some readers might be disappointed that Chris didn't spend more time describing the later part of his time in Japan in this book. I was initially in two minds about this. However, upon reflection, I think it was a good idea that he provided the reader with more information about his first few years in Japan. After all, if you want to know more about recent years, watch all his videos that were made after 2017. The book basically ends when Chris Sentai Studio was wrecked by an earthquake in March of 2022. This was covered in his video, My Apartment vs. Japan's Biggest Earthquake in 10 Years. We have really enjoyed reading abroad in Japan and will continue to watch the channel as well. I think the book does an amazing job of shedding some light on Chris Brooks first few years in Japan and if you've ever been curious about that time period, it's worth buying. Anyway, this review video is now getting a bit long. I hope all of you have enjoyed listening to me even though I haven't covered everything in the book. Feel free to discuss more in the comment sections. I have provided links to some of Chris's videos in my description below as well. My family and I give the book 4 stars out of 5. As Natsuki would say, this book was like a magic. Domo arigato for watching and I will see all of you in my next video. Links to the Abroad in Japan channel in the description. Photography Mom signing off for now.